Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm come up with another interesting video. So this time we are going to talk about, uh, especially on the how resources uh, management happens in the Kubernetes, right? Whether we should assign the resources while creating the pod. If you don't assign, what happens, right? So all these things we are going to talk about. So let me share my screen. I'll uh, explain that with the example. So let me first of all share the screen. Perfect. So this is uh, my white coat. I'll just try to explain the things here. So uh, let's say this is your one of the node. And on this node, let's say there are three pods created. Okay, let's say we have three pods created. Let's say pod A, pod B, and pod C. So these are the three pods we have. Now, we already talked about that uh, by default, every pod or in fact, uh, every container will get a dynamic resources from the host machine, right? So that's what the default behavior we know that, right? So now let's understand what problem we face if we uh, don't assign the resources to the pod. And then we'll see how we can assign those resources to the pod. So now let's consider that uh, for this particular machine, I have 10 GB RAM. Okay, so I'm just uh, talking in the context of RAM, but uh, this will same apply for the CPU as well. So now let's say our uh, system has 10 GB RAM and we have three pods, right? So ideally, as per the application owner's recommendation that uh, all this ABC pod, or in fact, the application running inside that, uh, they will be using the resources between, let's say, uh, 1 GB to 1.2 GB, okay? 1 GB to 1.2 GB. Okay, this range can be anything, but I'm just trying to give an example. So let's say each of these three pods should work fine between the range of RAM 1 GB to 1.2 GB. So we deployed this pod, okay? Everything is running fine, but what happens? B and C applications are perfectly fine. They are working fine between the range of RAM 1 GB to 1.2 GB, right? So application is not asking more resources than that. But for application A or the application running inside the pod A had some issue, okay? Some memory leak is there in that application, right? So in that case, it started with a 1 GB, but uh, due to memory leak, it started consuming more resources. It, initially started from 1.1, then 1.2, 1.3, 1.5 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB. So it started consuming more and more resources, right? So now on a host machine, we have 10 GB, right? And out of that, let's say B and C right now using 2 GB. So 8 GB, we still have available. So A applications started consuming more and more and at one point it will reach to the 8 GB, okay? And what will happen at that moment? That moment, okay, all the three pods will be asking for some more resources because B and C required between 1 to 1.2. And for A, now A already crossed almost 8 GB. So it will also ask resources, right? So whoever is asking resources that time and on the host machine, we don't have resources. What will happen? The cube CTL will, sorry, cube late, which is running here, will basically terminate that pod, whichever is asking the resource. Let's say B asking first will be terminated. Now, if it is running with a high availability, started with a controller, then it will get scheduled on some other and it will work fine. But again, this A will cause an issue again after some time to some other pods. Well. So here what happened? Even though there is no problem with the B and C, what happened? They are also getting impacted just because of application A or a pod A because it has a memory. Right? So this kind of issue will face Okay, if you don't assign a specific resources to the pod, right? So I hope everyone got the problem statement here that if you don't assign the resources, okay, the application or the pod which has a problem, it might impact other pod as well, right? So that is where it is recommended to assign the resources to the pod, right? So how we do that? It's a very simple, basically in the pod.yaml, uh, what we have to do is basically we have to provide the resources in a two format, okay? One is request, okay, which is nothing but a basically a, a minimum requirement. And there is a, a limits attribute that is nothing but a kind of a maximum requirement, right? 
So now each pod, we should basically, it is recommended to provide the minimum and maximum requirements. So for example, let's say for all these three application, we provide a minimum as a one GB RAM and maximum as a 1.2 GB RAM, right? So if you do this, what will happen now? When we provide this such limitation, minimum and maximum, now Kubelet is responsible for basically reserve that minimum requirement of the pod and it will not allow the pod to use more than the maximum limit. Now due to this, what will happen? For B and C, they are uh, they don't have any issues, so they will perfectly run within a 1 to 1.2 range. Okay, 1 GB to 1.2. But for pod A, there is a memory leak. So it will start with the 1 GB, but as soon as it reaches to the 1.2, Kubelet will not allow more than 1.2 GB. And that is where the pod will A will get terminated. Okay, if it is started with the controller, it will get scheduled on some other node. And again, on that note, same thing will happen. And when, as soon as it keeps happening, somewhere in the monitoring system, we'll get to know that, okay, this application is getting restarted every now and then. And that is where we can report that issue to the uh, developer or whoever is responsible. And they will come up with a solution, okay, why the memory leak is, and they will come up with a fix, and then we can release it, right? But here, what advantage we got it? Due to this resource uh, request and limit or the minimum and maximum range that we have given, now here, Kubelet is controlling that, okay? It is not allowing to, that problematic pod to keep consuming the resources. And that is the reason it is recommended to basically we should uh, provide the resources. Okay, so let's see practically how we can basically uh, do this. It's a very simple, doing it practically, it's a very, very simple. So I have a one Kubernetes cluster. And uh, on this, what I'll do is, I'll just create one pod, okay? So what I'll do, I'll just use the some commands. Okay, to create the pod template. So I hope everyone is already aware about. So this is, uh, I have one sample pod. Okay, so let me just uh, remove this uh, stuff that I have used basically for some other purpose for uh, some other video. So this was for a set scheduling. But yeah, this is how typically your pod.yaml will look like, right? So now where we add the resources, this is the location where we add the resources, right? So let me just uh, modify this. So resources here, uh, as we discussed, we have two sections, a request and limit. So let me just add the request section. And inside this, we can add a CPU and memory, but for now let's add it as a memory. So let's say I am using a memory, uh, minimum requirement is let's say 200 MB, okay? And similarly, we have a limit section. And in this limit section, basically we can provide the maximum. Limit. Okay, so let me add that as well. So request we have added, that's 200 and let's say, Limits, I am adding a memory as a 300 MB. And that's it. We have a uh, minimum and maximum provided. So as soon as we this uh, pod we create, now it's a responsibility of the Kubelet to control your uh, pod memory utilization within this range, right? So very simple to add that. Let me just save it and let's create the pod. So kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yaml. Oh, sorry, I have not set the alias for kubectl. So let me type full command kubectl and you can see pod got created. So kubectl get pod and here you can see pod is in almost in a running state. It, it has to pull the image. That's why basically it is showing like this. Okay, so you can see it's successfully running on the kind worker two. So now the kubelet running on this kind worker two is responsible for putting the limitation on that minimum and maximum range for this particular pod. But yeah, at any, at any point of time, Kubelet is responsible for providing at least the minimum resources to that pod, right? So yeah, uh, that's the concept. I hope everyone got it and why we should provide these resources, okay? So I hope everyone understood. So thanks everyone. If you like the video, please uh, subscribe it, like it and share it with your circle. Thanks everyone. Uh, I'll come up with uh, another interesting video.